<laughs> With us today is the first person to announce that he does want to be governor, Speaker of the House, Jim Amon, Democrat from Milford. Mr. Speaker, thanks so much for being with us today. Pleasure to be here, Dennis. Now, when you announced that you were going to run for governor yes. earlier this year, those faces weren't on that box. Now they are. What do you think of all the people who've now said, you know what, I may want to be governor? Well, you know, of course, a couple of those, a uh, few of those folks have been uh, either running for governor before or still have always put out that they're interested. So. I'm excited about the field of Democrats. You know, we're hungry. The Democrats have not had uh, that seat since Bill O'Neill, almost going on 20 years now. So those are some uh, wonderful people that are running for, for uh, uh, wanting to run for governor, and uh, I'm, I'm uh, pleased to be uh, in that company. Some of these Democrats are saying that they're not going to run if Attorney General mm -hmm. Richard Blumenthal decides that he is going to run, and we're expecting his decision in just a couple yeah. of weeks. What do you think? Do you think he's going to run for governor? No, I've never thought that uh, Attorney General Dick Blumenthal is going to run. I believe he's going to run for re-election uh, for the Attorney General, and he's a fantastic Attorney General, and I've been my good friend for years and one of our best Democrats. Uh, and I think he uh, probably tries to uh, seek uh, a senatorial seat in 2012, a uh, Joe Lieberman seat. That's my call, and I'm going to stick to it. What if Senator Dodd's popularity uh, continues to get out a little bit? Do you think he would ever challenge a senator in a primary? Uh, you mean Attorney General Blumenthal against yes. Senator Dodd? I, I, you know, that's a very good question. I, I hope not. Uh, Senator Dodd has been uh, just fantastic for the state of Connecticut. You know, it's ironic. The guy ran for president. He's been out there working his tail off to try to, uh, to do that, and I was proud of his run, even though he didn't get much support. Uh, then he's uh, certainly been doing everything in this horrible economy to try to be in the banking uh, chair to try to do things and make the right decisions for the state. I hope that uh, people recognize Chris Dodd for over the great years that he's done, and uh, I think he'll come back strong. I'm proud that Chris uh, Dodd is uh, our senator. Do you think, uh, why do you want to be governor? Well, listen, uh, I, you know, I, I've uh, been in the game now 25 years. I have a strong track record. I have ideas. I still have the passion. You know, there's a difference between people that uh, have a feeling that they'd like to run uh, for the sake of running versus having the passion to try to make our state a better state. I have some great ideas, uh, uh, as I did with Hollywood East. I think that uh, in this economy, we need to create jobs and opportunity. One of the ideas is Little Delaware, for example, corporation capital of the world. It's, what they've done down there is no different than we did with Hollywood East. We gave, they give opportunities for corporations uh, to be welcome into their state. We can do those sort of things with simple tax changes. Uh, we can grow a green economy. We can continue with fuel cell investment and stem cells. There's so many things we can do. And uh, I heard today, uh, Westfield Mall, and nobody's reporting it, all the doom and gloom we hear out there, 15 new stores opened in the Westfield Mall in Milford. But we were not hearing about the entrepreneurs, the American spirit of still trying to go forward and try to do things. We have more uh, patents right now here in the state of Connecticut than anywhere in the nation. We yeah. build submarines and, and we build helicopters. and Those are the sort of things we need to keep on promoting and marketing out there, how great our state is. If you're wrong and the Attorney General does decide to run for governor, will you bow out of the race and let him do it, or will you challenge him in a primary? You know, that's a very good question. I mean, right now I've had 20 uh, different endorsements, uh, some from the, you know, from the Teamsters to firefighters, iron workers. There's a lot of support in the campaign. Uh, you know, that's something I think that uh, the party would have to sit down and make a decision. Right now, uh, I'm nobody's campaign manager. I want to be governor. Uh, and uh, it'd be kind of uh, embarrassing for me to think that any other candidate out there is the better candidate than me. Why would I? I mean, you can imagine Muhammad Ali going into the ring thinking he wasn't the greatest, right? You have to think that you have the ideas to be a great governor and to move forward. Uh, but certainly, uh, you know, the people will tell me. Uh, we've been getting great response. Uh, but uh, let's say I'm out there a year from now and I'm talking to, to the wind. Uh, nobody's listening, then I know that maybe that's not my time. But right now, the support is there, and it's gaining every day, and I'm having, I'm having a, lot, a lot of fun with it. Well, let's talk about some of these other Democrats. Why do you think you're a better candidate for governor than, let's say, uh, Dan Malloy? Well, listen, uh, first of all, and again, in all due respect to Dan Malloy, who I did support last time, and I, I like Dan a lot, but Dan Malloy uh, lost to the guy that got 35% of the vote. We need a Democrat that can win, not only to get Democratic support, but get unaffiliated and Republican support. For 20 years, what we've done, we have the strength of our party has always been our diversity, and the weakness of our party is our division. And what happens every single time, we divide the party. It happened with Dan Malloy and DiStefano, happened way back with Larson and Curry, and go on and on. Do you think that um, if, if Mayor Malloy is nominated, he'll lose to Governor Rell? 
I, th I personally think that Dan Malloy will get a certain segment. Uh, you know, he's way down in Stanford. I told him two years ago or three years ago when we spoke, the biggest difficulty, difficulty he was going to have is getting the people to think that he's not from New York. He had to get out and get his name out there and get the recognition. I still, to, to this day, believe that even after the race, there's a lot of people that really don't know Mayor Malloy. Uh, I believe that with my record versus Dan Malloy, my legislative record, uh, he can't compete with the things that I've done, uh, whether it be Megan's Law, Child Car Safety Seats, that deal with the legislature. He's been a mayor for a long period of time, and God bless him, uh, he's done a good job as mayor, but that doesn't make him a good governor. What do you think, uh, Secretary of State Bicewitz, do you think she could do a good job as, go Listen, you know, as the nominee? Uh, Susan and I, we were actually seatmates together, and Susan's a bright lady, just... Listen, all the folks that you have up there are, are great Democrats. And, uh, but Susan, uh, again, I don't think Susan will go past the Democratic Party. We need a candidate that's a moderate, uh, that will take Republican votes, unaffiliated votes, and uh, Democratic votes. It's not just about going to the primary and winning the primary, if there's a primary, or winning at the convention. Because we've done that every year, and what's happened, we've lost to Weicker, Roland, and now Rell. We need a candidate that's going to attract everybody, not just Democrats, uh, again, unaffiliated and Republicans, and my race is doing that uh, all over the state. We have support from, from all ends, and quite surprisingly, some of the names, uh, I think, when they come public, are going to shock a few people. Let's talk a little bit about the governor. Uh, her approval rating remains pretty high right yeah. now. I, how do you go after you know, the well, go, you know, popular governor? Well, listen, uh, the Governor Rell, in my opinion, again, uh, uh, this is my handicap, and we'll, we can talk about it two years from now. I do not believe Governor Rell runs. I think Governor Rell is not, um, I think she is tired, and I mean that in a nice way, not a bad way. I think that uh, it's been uh, four years, five years, six years now that she's going in as being governor. She's going to have two very difficult years with the economy. It's going to be very rough on her. And I just don't think personally... Uh, uh, she's she's going to want to run for a re-election. So my call is, if Governor Rell is out of the race and Dick Blumenthal is out of the race, that's why I got into this race way back in February of last year of, of this year, See. and uh, it gives me, I think, a very good chance of winning this race. So you're basing your campaign on the assumption that, that you're running against another Republican and not the governor? Correct. Who do you think that will be? Um, maybe Lieutenant Governor Fideli. I thought maybe Senator McKinney, but McKinney uh, seems that he's interested in running for Congress against Himes. Uh, maybe uh, there's another name out there, but uh, that's the only one that I would think that the Republican Party would be grooming right now. And by the way, Mike and I served together. Mike was uh, as when I was chairman of insurance committee. He was my ranking member, and uh, Mike's, uh, Mike's a good guy. I like Mike. If the governor uh, remains popular and decides, yes, she is going to seek re-election, do you stay in the race? Well, it depends. If the, the support continue, continues to come my way, Dennis, it would be kind of silly for me if I'm getting support from everywhere uh, and then to back out because it's Governor Rell. Again, it's because the same But assumption. the governor could scare you off. Saying, right? No, no, it's the same assumption. Do you go that far into a race and then because Governor Rell's popularity, uh, will that scare you off? Or do you have issues that you believe uh, will bring our state forward and, and why you would have to try to tell the people why you would be a better governor? Well, you know, if you had to grade the governor's performance uh, in her years and hours, what would you give her? Well, yeah, that, geez, I'll tell you, listen, that, that's a difficult one because uh, personally, the governor, uh, and going, you talked about popularity. Being a governor is not all about being a, po you know, have, being a popularity contest. It's about being a leader. Has she and been a good leader? I think the governor's had many, with that popularity, I think the governor really could have been uh, able to do a lot more. Uh, she's very cautious. That's her. That's her personality. Um, and I think sometimes in these sort of times, you need bold leadership, and you need leadership that goes forward and, and, and tries to make tough decisions and makes our economy better, creates jobs, creates opportunities. And I don't I haven't seen that happen in the last four years. House Speaker Jim Amon, Democrat of Milford, we'll see you back here in this program Thank again. You, Thank Best you. Best of luck in the campaign and uh, congratulations on your retirement. What are you going to be doing next? Well. <laughs> I have. Uh, I've, I actually have a, had a few uh, offers, and uh, I'll be making an announcement on that probably sometime in the new year. Good enough. All right. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you.